Hi there. In the previous video, we talked about the add environment property wrapper, but we didn't really talk about the add environment object property wrapper. So in this tutorial, we'll talk about the difference between those, why and when we need the add environment object versus just the add environment property wrapper. And lastly, we also want to know how to use it in our own projects. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So all I did here is I was reading from the environment and um, based on the color scheme, I changed the text in the body to either dark mode enabled or dark mode disabled. And if we try to run this on the simulator, you will see it works just as expected. So right now dark mode is disabled, but if I go into the toggle here and set it to dark mode you will see it will say dark mode enabled as you just saw the body got re-evaluated every time the color scheme was changed in fact if you look up color scheme it is of type enum and enums as you know are value types but here's the main difference between the environment and environment objects if you would pass an observable object which is obviously a class instead of an enum or some struct, which are of value type, then you will notice that this change, this body is not really re-evaluated. Now to prove you this point, I created another playground project. And in here, I simply followed the steps I showed you in the previous video regarding the environment property wrapper. So, the only new thing here is that we have a class now, the game setting, which is an observable object, and it has this published variable score. So we follow the steps from the previous video. We create an environment key and we create an environment values extension as follows. And then all we did is we initialized this vStacks environment for the setting context with a new game setting instance. Remember, game setting is an observable object and this label view can then read it from the environment and it can print it as a text. Now, I also have this button increase, which basically increases the setting context score by one every time I tap on the button. Now, if you run this app, you will notice that it does not really update the label. So if I would press on the increase button, you will notice it still stays at zero. Now, sometimes it is fine. You might be fine with just having a reference to it and you're not really dependent on updating your body. But sometimes we really want to have this uh, behavior of, of an observable object where the view gets re-rendered every time the object changes. In this case, our settings score. So to enable this behavior, we have to work with environment object instead of just the environment because the environment will only update the body when the value type, a struct, enum or any value type really changes. So what we need to do is we have to replace this at environment with environment object. So let's take a look how this works. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a class called game settings. and I'm going to make it an observable object. In here, I'm going to have a published variable called score and I will set it initially to zero. Now to access this environment object, all I have to do is type environment object like so and then create a variable called setting and give it the type. Now here's an important thing you should keep in mind. When you use this environment object, there is not a default value like at when you use at environment. Remember when you define the at environment key, you have to also provide a default value. Now here, this is not the case. So when we declare this, we are saying that we are 100% sure that one of the content views ancestor views must have set the environment object because if that is not the case, your app will crash. And this is really important to remember. So in order for the app to not crash, what we have to do is we have to go into the app and in here we have to say environment object and then pass in an instance of game setting. 
like so. And then we go back to the content view and we can modify this example a bit. So I will remove all of this. And I will simply retrieve the setting.score. And I will also put this thing into a Wii stack. And I will also create a button inside of here that will allow us to increase the score. All right, now let's try to run the app. Now, if I try to increase the score, you will notice that the score actually changes, although our game setting is not a value type. Now to quickly wrap up what this environment object property wrapper allows us, I would like to show you some slides from the WWDC 2020 conference. And what we basically did here is our game setting is the observable object. And instead of just passing it to the children to their initializers, what we are now able to do is to simply pass the environment object to a ancestor view and then any child view can easily access this environment object by simply using this environment object property wrapper. Now you might wonder why the environment required you to uh, define a key and in the environment object you didn't really need to define a key and that is because when you use the environment object it simply uses the type which in this case is the game setting as the key for us. So we do not have to define a key. So this is all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when new content arrives. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.